everyone, and welcome to the latest Tempo Storm Wild Meta Snapshot Breakdown for Ashes of Outland. Aggro reigns supreme in the post-nerf Ashes meta, and decks like Pirate Warrior and Odd Demon Hunter are the most popular decks you'll expect to face on ladder even after the third nerf in a row to the Demon Hunter class. Despite aggro's popularity, the meta is adjusting well. Anti-aggro strategies are a rising stock, and a wide variety of strategies of all types are becoming more viable, leading to a meta with more Tier 1 and Tier 2 decks than we've seen in a long time. Which decks are coming out on top? Come join our experts as we take a closer look at the format's latest developments. As always, be sure to subscribe to the Tempo Storm Hearthstone YouTube channel and ring the bell to stay up to date with our Hearthstone content. Quest Mage still maintains its position at the top of our snapshot, even with the rise of aggro decks that are gunning for it. Quest Mage has the distinction of being the strongest anti-control deck in the format, and even against aggro decks, Quest Mage's swing turns are still so powerful that Quest Mage can overpower aggro with a decent draw. The raw power of this deck warps the rest of the format around it and is a big contributor to why aggro decks are dominant in the post-nerf meta. Even though Quest Mage is powerful, it's one of the most difficult decks to play in such an aggressive meta, but as anti-aggro decks gain more traction, Quest Mage will find easier and easier matchups, so it's nowhere close to falling off the map anytime soon. Joining Quest Mage in Tier 1, we have Pirate Warrior, which has become the premier aggro deck of of the format. Thanks to Patches the Pirate and Parachute Brigand, Pirate Warrior can build an explosive board on the very first turn to pressure mages and gain a head start against other aggro decks with just a single one drop. Versions of the deck built around Corsair Cash and Ankar have become the most prevalent, with Upgrade and Bloodsail Cultus buffing Ankar to the point where the upgraded weapon can be enough to beat opponents down by itself. Pirate Warrior is the format's main deterrent against Quest Mage, and it's one of the main targets for every anti-aggro deck in the format, so you need to keep this deck on your radar. If Quest Mage is the best combo deck and Pirate Warrior is the best aggro deck, then Reno Priest is the format's premier anti-aggro deck. Between Priest's healing, single target, and AoE removal, and of course the flexible Highlander suite, Reno Priest is packed with tools to dominate aggression, but what sets Reno Priest apart from other control decks is its own combo win condition with Raza the Chained and Shadow Reaper Anduin, which gives Reno Priest an edge against slower decks while also giving it a way to close out the game reliably against aggro. On paper, Reno Priest's matchup spread against most decks is quite oppressive. It has very poor matchups against Quest Mage and other combo decks, so Reno Priest is far from uncounterable. Still, Reno Priest is bound to be strong as long as aggro remains popular. Cube Warlock is our last tier 1 deck in this snapshot, and while it might be a little less popular than it once was, it still has strong odds against the meta at large. Cube Warlock's heavy early removal and Voidcaller taunt package can easily push the game out of reach of aggro decks like Pirate Warrior and Discard Warlock, while its wide assortment of over-the-top threats gives it an edge against control decks like Jade Druid and Odd Warrior. Cube's matchup spread is impressive, but its matchup against Odd Demon Hunter is problematic thanks to that deck's cheap silence effects and persistent damage. Quest Mage is also still a problem for Cube, but with the meta shifting away from it, we expect Cube Warlock to stick around in Tier 2 for some time to come. Odd Demon Hunter is still sitting at the top of Tier 2, Two, and remains one of the most popular decks on the Wild Ladder, even after three rounds of nerfs to the Demon Hunter class. The most recent nerfs only affected Crimson Sigil Runner and Priestess of Fury, and many Demon Hunters are still playing with the weaker versions of these cards despite the nerfs. Demon Hunter's early game is still more than powerful enough to carry it against most matchups, between the strength of its world-class one-drops and the one-mana upgraded Baku hero power. Demon Hunter's popularity and the viability of anti-aggro strategies go hand in hand, so you'll see it struggle against decks like Reno Priest and Odd Warrior. Pirate Warrior also has a knack at getting ahead of Odd Demon Hunter in the early turns thanks to the board dominating power of its weapons, though Demon Hunters are now packing freeze effects in order to fight back. Secret Mage holds its spot in Tier 2 as well. Thanks to Arcane Flak Mage and Flame Ward, Secret Mage still dominates other aggro decks like Even Shaman and Odd Paladin, and can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Pirate Warrior. Against combo decks like Quest Mage, Secret Mage takes an aggressive approach and can end the game quickly with damage from Medivh's Valet and Cloud Prince. All of these good matchups make Secret Mage seem strong on paper, but all of its AoE removal and burn
burn damage are much less effective against dedicated anti-aggro decks, especially those packing robust healing and armor gain like Reno Priest and Odd Warrior. Next up, Discard Warlock climbs to Tier 2 in this snapshot after weeks of development after Ashes of Outland. At this point, Discard Warlock has a critical mass of discard synergies, so the deck has no problem building a board with oversized minions while drawing cards and dealing damage just as long as you discard the right cards at the right time. Discard Warlock is unique among the top tiers for having a relatively even matchup spread. Like all aggro decks, it can struggle against control, but with so much card draw between Malchazar's Imp, Hand of Gul'dan, and Life Tap, Discard Warlock can easily rebuild against mass removal. Against other aggro decks, Discard Warlock has plenty of ways to hit the board early, but can struggle to take back the board if it's lost. Reno Mage is also sitting tight in Tier 2, but we're seeing a shift in the types of Reno Mage decks you're likely to run into. Reno Quest Mage is still a force to be reckoned with thanks to the Highlander Suite, but the nerf to open the Waygate was a bigger blow to this deck than it was for Tempo Quest Mage. The Time Warp Vargath combo is now a much less reliable win condition until deep in the late game, and having one fewer card in the opening hand thanks to the quest is a liability against aggro decks. Because of this, we're seeing Reno Mages start to drop the quest altogether and shift towards minion heavy builds featuring Luna's Pocket Galaxy, along with Dragoncaster and Escaped Mana Saber to ramp it out early. Since this version of Reno Mage doesn't have to dedicate any space to random spell generation, it's better suited to weather early game aggression, but it's weaker against quest mages and other combo decks in comparison. The final deck in this video spotlight has taken a break from top tier play for a while, but it's in an excellent position to take advantage of the wild meta's recent trends. Galakrond Warrior is back, and as anti-aggro decks become more popular, Galakrond and company are well equipped to go the distance against them. Galakrond the Unbreakable's Invoke Triggers and Hero Power give you a consistent source of damage that allows you to keep up the pressure, while Wrench Caliber gives you the potential to shut off no duplicate effects, like Reno Jackson, with bombs before those cards can push the game out of your reach. The Invoke cards are also the key to holding the board against other aggro decks, and Scion of Ruin comes in clutch for recovering the board. If the game goes long against Control or reaches a stalemate against aggro, a fully invoked Galakrond can give you all of the gas you need to reach the finish line against any deck. Galakrond Warrior has returned to Tier 2, and we're keeping an eye on it to see where it goes from here. Altogether, the wild meta is aggro-driven, but the competitive landscape is still shifting. Anti-aggro strategies are taking root, and combo decks remain strong, so as a result, we have more viable Tier 1 and Tier 2 decks on the wild ladder than we've seen in quite some time. Will the field narrow as the meta settles down? We're keeping our fingers on the pulse of the meta, so check out the full meta report for all the details, and as always, be sure to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to stay up to date with our Wild Hearthstone content. Thanks for watching!